Yo, what's up, Vintage Gamers? What you're about to see is a Vintage League. Uh, between rounds of a Vintage Challenge, I decided to start up a, a league with Mono White. This is a, uh, an edited version of Mono White. I changed some things to try to play Once Upon a Time. Uh, I felt like having Once Upon a Time to find more caverns, archons, and initiative creatures would just increase my number of keepable hands. Um, so I took the, you know, the Hank Chancellor Mono White list, and I put some Once Upon a Time games in it instead of playing the... Anointed Peacekeepers. Uh, I have also have, you know, a pretty teched out sideboard, anti-oath, anti-graveyard, tons of tabernacles, swords, null rod. I, I, put, I put null rod in. I think null rod is a great way to get um, uh, some wins against the different artifact combo decks. And uh, I think this is just like a very interesting take on mono white. So I'm going to play it through a league and you guys get to watch that and it should be fun. Uh, and hope you all enjoy the video. If you'd like to see your deck played on this channel, check out the Patreon link in the description below where you can find all the information you need to submit a donation deck list. Let's battle. Okay, let's battle. Hey, River Mouse, I haven't seen them in a while. Why is this like halfway across my screen? Uh, okay, uh, let's try this. I have a Chancellor of the Annex. This hand's sweet. I guess most Black Lotus hands are sweet, but... Man, Chancellor of the Annex sucks. <laughs> they got me. Damn. This just feels like an Archon slam. No, Chancellor is not unnecessary. It's just bad on the draw. <laughs> yeah. It's nice with... It gives you more Chrome Mox things as well, which helps your Ancient Tomb Chrome Mox hands, but... I don't know. I built, this is the version of the deck that's like all in on doing the thing, so... Doing the powerful turn one play. I would not like to pay three life. All right. Unfortunately, I didn't have any extra mocks in to go with this, but I can't complain about having a Black Lotus, can I? Okay, Underground Sea. Wasteland? <laughs> no, you are not allowed to play Magic. Stop that. Knight's Whisper. <laughs> land? Land, 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 sad days. And this is why Archon of Emeria needs to have the initiative creatures after it for the clock purposes. I don't think we're winning this game. Storm with grief that sides into oath. You did just say a bunch of words, and it is River Mouse, so you're probably right. <laughs> River Mouse is a eccentric deck builder. Oh, Dark Petition. Do they have an answer to Archon in their deck? Three ball? Land three ball? <gasps> Ooh, I think they, we just play Archon on Cavern and play another Archon, yeah? I think so. I think that's better. Archon is the best creature in Vintage, don't at me. <laughs> this card is so messed up. It's so good. <laughs> I love it. It's weird because it's the kind of card I hate, 
but I just love it. <laughs> oh, man. Time out. Why do you want to time yourself out? Time walk? All right. Whatever you say. <laughs> Got him. All right. Two Archons. Too much. All right. So we think they signed into Oath. Do we need to bring in the Containment Priests? I mean, it's pretty easy to take out the Solitudes, so... <laughs> yeah the legacy players don't understand the legacy players play like the most slow controlling games of all time right now that format is slow um what do i do how do i board out enough cards to do this i feel like you don't need season dungeoneer in this matchup I think the Trinisphere is still good against our opponent if they're storming, right? Maybe not. I feel like trimming Season Dungeoneers makes a lot of sense to me. I guess on the draw, Chancellor is not that good. Maybe we just trim Chancellors on the draw. That's probably fine. Yeah, what if we just trim Chancellors on the draw? Oh, we want this Mental Misstep, though. What a weird sideboard. All right, let's try that. Yo, I'm going to roll up to the showcase next weekend playing Mono White, and people are going to be like, what, did, what happened to you, Justin? You used to be so cool. <laughs> maybe, maybe not so cool. You used to be such a combo player, and then you rolled up with Mono White for your last important tournament. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah they won't say that true true factually accurate black this is dark ritual grief oh nice whisper okay hydrate welcome back time walk i'll get some water after this match thank you i appreciate that all right i'm gonna cast once upon a time does that resolve it does resolve Ooh, lauren i have so many choices here I think Thalia is the best one. Yeah, not hitting a land off my containment or my uh, once upon a time was not great. So I don't think I can null rod myself here. I guess I should play Ancient Tomb and Kitty so they have days in their deck. I'm just gonna put the Season Dungeoneer. Uh, I don't really want to show them Containment Priest. Maybe that's silly. I also don't have a land, so... I think it makes sense to just jam with Thalia, though. Also, this makes it so if they play a land and play Oath, I they are tapped out and I can just Lauren the Oath. Though they know about Lauren, so maybe they wouldn't do that. I guess they're going to do it anyways. Oh! Feed the Swarm! That's exciting. White Plume's kind of nice here. Seems like a quite a good draw. Fix my mana. <laughs> I can't even wa watch Mono White gameplay, but you can watch a 10 minute Doomsday turn where I, in the end I make the wrong decision. <laughs> I don't think there's nothing to think about at all, but it is less complicated than Doomsday, I would agree. <laughs> Doomsday was lit. <laughs> Doomsday was something, man. Doomsday was something. Ah. <laughs> Mono white gameplay is not relatable. Uh oh. Is it oathing? Are we oathing? Oath time. So I think I'm going to, f I think I'm going to last well, and that way I can maybe hit Cavern. 
I don't think the clock matters too much, but if I can get a cavern, then I'll be extremely happy. But if I can't, then I at least have two containment priests, so it's not the end of the world. Uh, Lauren containment priest is probably better. Now that we hit a land. I didn't cast any spells, though. Oh, you mean like Mind Break Trap on their upkeep? I see what you're saying. That makes sense. Uh huh. Oh, I was going to double Priest, but then I hit the mana, so I think it makes more sense to play Lauren. Could be wrong. Another Feed the Swarm. Okay. It's not really uh, the best removal. Another Feed the Swarm? <laughs> okay. See, we got an extra damage in because it was a, a Lauren instead of a Containment Priest. I really like the four Containment Priest board in comparison to the whatever else we were doing. Uh, maybe I should have... I want a Null Rod here. I guess I'll just take do damage. I guess I can just use the treasure token. Who cares? That was many more Feed the Swarms than I've seen in a Vintage match in a very long time. I don't know. I, I don't know, Code. I don't know. I don't know. You lost to it? So now you should know. I probably shouldn't play the containment. Well, this at least it's lethal, I guess. How does gemstone caverns even work? Oh. All right, mono white. Uh, yeah. The the once upon a times actually make the one ups better, but. Ooh, the old double chancellor. We actually have an answer to the Oath of Druids, so I'm down. We are also pretty close to casting Chancellor for that what it's worth. <laughs> yeah. Co, did you see my deck from from yesterday's stream? You would enjoy that deck. Code, go play some of this. Hold on, I'll show you. Where is it? Code, this is this is the deck for you right here. Four color, natural order, greenstone zenith, or greenstone zenith, green sun zenith, ephemerate infinite combo with uh, eternal witness and time walk. Siege Rhino, Atraxa, Elish Norn. It's a hell of a deck. Uro? Is a Ramanap Excavator in there for you? With too many... No, no, no! We get to play Yorion. And uh, we get to play Yorion. And we get to play... Um, Force of Will. It's great. There you go, Chancellors. Get that Mox Pearl. Show them you mean business. Basic Snow-Covered Island. It was fun. I was really sad that I played so badly yesterday, but it was a good time. Brutal. Mox Pearl. Cost them nothing. All right, Ancient Tomb, baby. Slam, slam Chancellor. That's a Caracas. Caracas is actually a good draw here. Um, I feel like... We bait with Mana Crypt and then play Athalia and then we can play Black Lotus Athalia. Or either way, we play Black Lotus. All right. Okay. 
We could still play a Chancellor next turn now if we draw a land. And we have a Lauren if they go for like... They can't even play an Oath right now, but if they could play an Oath. Yeah, one, well, two mana preordain. Okay, all right, okay. All right, come on, baby. Uncounterable cha Chancellor. All we need is a land and we get the Uncounterable Chancellor in play. I deserve this, please. After all the losses today, I deserve to hard cast Chancellor of the Annex. Survey says. <gasps> da -da -da -da. Da -da -da -da. God, what a life I'm living. <laughs> Hold on, it goes to Twitter. What a good time. Oh, I didn't get the turn two in there. Turn <laughs> two, your opponent casts Uncounterable Chancellor of the Annex. How do you respond? <laughs> uh, at least something is going right in the world. All right, I'm going to bring in four Containment Priests. Man, Containment Priest is pulling its weight here, huh? Uh, Containment Priest, Gemstone Caverns, Mental Misstep, and then we take out Solitude. I actually think we keep in Trinisphere. Nah, we probably take out Trinisphere on the draw. And uh, one Once Upon a Time. Look at that. Once Upon a Time gives you so many free cuts. It's perfect. I don't think we care about like beating a creature off of their Oath with four Containment Priests. Uh, this hand looks like fine. I don't win leagues either, Zajad. I don't win anything. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying to stress this. I'm bad. Look at my rating. <laughs> There's no winning happening. I reveal a Chancellor of the Annex. I feel like I should not stream the showcase and play Mono White, and then no one will have any idea it's coming, and then boom, got him. Nice ponder. What if we just wasteland them here? It's kind of bad, right? I want a wasteland. Am I stupid? I don't care. Wastelanding. This is not allowed. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. All right. Okay. I guess it's better to just play this tapped. Uh oh, are we getting vamped? No, we're not getting vamped. Oh, that's pretty good. That does ruin all of my efforts. I could like cast this at random times, but it it opens me up to getting collect uh uh, uh Oko to turn early, which I don't really like. I mean, my, my opponent knows everything that's going on now. I feel like we are pretty unlikely to win this game considering our opponent got to cast ancestral recall and see our hand. It's a little unfortunate, but we were on the draw and our hand wasn't super powerful, so.
I think I am just gonna cast my spells though. Like if I'm, if I'm not casting my spells, I'm not winning. So I might as well get them in play and just hope it's enough. This is a cleric though, right? So I need to play my just my seasoned dungeoneer first. I I'm learning all about all the intricacies of seasoned dungeoneer. <laughs> Ooh, resolvers. Yo, what's up, Cameron? Thanks for the uh, continued support. Much appreciated. I think we're it's weird. I I am zero and three in this stream, but I'm having a good time. So that's nice. I wasn't having a good time after we were 0-2. <laughs> but I, I pulled back. My opponent cast this too late. Yeah, my opponent should not have cast this at this timing window. Uh, Assassin's Trophy. That's a Sven classic. Uh, wait, what happened? Oh, that is the right timing window. I thought it had already done the thing, but I guess it doesn't explore if it dies. Interesting. Okay, I was wrong. I am learning. <laughs> How close are we to casting our Chancellor? We're pretty close, right? Also, we can forge onto a spirit token for value. We need that Cavern of Souls. Where's our Cavern of Souls? I want them to play an Oath. Not No, don't play an Oath unless we draw Cavern of Souls. And then we can go, boom. Get you. Too sleepy. Now, I got a lot of sleep last night. Ooh, we're going in. I think we're going to forge. I think we're going to forge onto the Spirit Token here. Uh, I want to clock my opponent. I don't think I need to look at cards anymore. Because lands get us closer to Chancellor and uh, Lauren. I guess I have a Caracas, so that also helps. What is this? Oh, snuff out. Okay. This is like pretty good for me. I am still short on my Chancellor, but I'm glad I'm clocking. We're just going to play a Lauren. If they play an Oath, we can bounce this Lauren back and then play two Laurens. I don't know. This deck's kind of hot. I don't have to resolve blue spells. I just win the game every time. Seems kind of free. All right. Round three of our Vintage League with Mono White. Um, this hand has got some issues, but for the Black Lotus, I can't imagine putting it away. They revealed a Chancellor of the Annex. Brilliant. And we got the Mirror. Uh, Thalia here is actually kind of annoying. That Archon is actually really, really strong on the play here. Archon would be a nightmare. I think we might just lose straight up to that Archon right now. <laughs> Human, okay. So is that going to be a, an anointed peacekeeper then? Oh. Counterable White Plume. Interesting. Their mana situation is a slightly better than ours. I think what we're going to do is we're going to go Cavern on Human, pay for our Pearl, play Lotus Dungeoneer. That way we get to keep the Pearl. I'm not sure we're winning this game just because we're on the draw, but we did play a Dungeoneer first, so we might be ahead. So if they play a, uh, a Dungeoneer of their own, make this thing a 5-5 and attack, it's bad for me. But then we get to steal the thing and then go one deeper. So maybe we could go like Lost Well stat. I don't know if that's actually better. Hmm. I guess they could also have a solitude. 
Ooh, they have a solitude. So they'll solitude my seasoned dungeoneer, take the initiative, maybe forge onto the solitude. And then we actually don't have the mana to play a dungeoneer, huh? That's not good. Uh oh. And they're getting kind of close to casting this. No, I guess they put the Chancellor away already. Mm, things are bad. Things are very bad. We probably need to draw not Chancellor. Um, I think we just die, right? We take 8, 12. We take back the initiative. I guess if they have only lands in their hand, we might not immediately die. Damn, they knew how to throw hands. <laughs> Things are bad. Boom, ba boom, ba boom. I mean, if they have a, a seasoned engineer as well. Ah, all right. Opponent's hand was definitely the stronger one. All right, Mono White Mirror. We got Chalice on the play. We've got Null Rod on the play. I'm not sure about that one. And we've got Swords. I don't think it's correct to bring in Mental Mist up just for Swords. Um, How do we cut cards here? Are Chancellors actually any good here? I don't feel like they are. I think I like Chancellors and Lauren. Dahlia, I think, is fine on the play and is a creature and first strikes. I think we want to be null rotting on the play. Maybe that's not even good. I don't know. I'm not really sure. Definitely want Chalice on the play and Swords. But I, besides that, I'm not really sure. I'm not really convinced this does what we needed to do. Caver uh, Once Upon a Time should be pretty good here. This looks pretty good. I think that we could be... Obviously, a lot of it is up to who has the better hand. It is a mirror, and it is not like a, a, a card draw. Lots of spells are cast mirror. Here's a once upon a time hand with turn one Thalia plus Wasteland. It's a little rough, to be honest. But we have a once upon a time. We could theoretically put the once upon a time in the chrome box, play Amiria's Call, and play Athalia, which saves our Lotus Petal and Wasteland. It's probably worse than once upon a time and having a choice, though. So I think this is just a keep. Athalia is not very good against an opposing Solitude, but it is good against opposing fast mana. Uh, it's not as good as playing, like, turn one Archon, but I guess we could still find an Archon off our Once Upon a Time and play a turn one Archon. So, that is, like, still live. I, I think this is not, like, a top-tier draw, but I'm not really convinced this is a mulligan either. I do think that 
card quantity matters here in the mirror, especially with chrome moxes and that kind of thing in our deck. There's definitely a lot of allure to like mulliganing for a turn one season dungeoneer or something, but I just don't know how likely that really is. I need to get more games with the deck to know if that makes sense. So let's cast Once Upon a Time. And we hit Season Dungeoneer, Solitude Thalia. Well, it's a pretty easy Season Dungeoneer, but obviously our mana situation is a little rough. Uh, I think the answer is just going to be put the Solitude under the Chrome Mox and play the Thalia with uh without using the lotus petal uh and that way i can play a turn two dungeoneer if i don't want to wasteland and this will also stop them from playing a crazy amount of fast mana if they don't have a solitude for it i don't know if that's right but that's what came to my head as right wasteland interesting Ancient Tomb is an incredible draw here. Three Ball also looks pretty game-winning. Unless they have a bunch of Ancient Tombs. Hmm. Can I legally cast Three Ball here? I can't legally cast Three Ball because it costs four mana. So the answer is no. <laughs> if I could cast Three Ball here, is it even correct to? I'm not sure. It's a little unfortunate to cast, uh, to play Wasteland here in case they have like second Wasteland. But I think I need it in case I draw a one mana land for my Dungeoneer. Only castable in paper. <laughs> true. Uh, true. Too true. I would have loved an Ancient Tomb draw there. Even a Lotus would be pretty good. Okay, so opponent is going to hit the Thalia with the Solitude. I kind of consider that a big win, to be honest. Them getting two cards for, for my Thalia seems good for me, but that could mean that they go, like, land, mox, mox, uh, you know. Yeah. Take the initiative. Oh, Archon. Okay. So that means that we're not going to be able to play Season Dungeoneer this turn. Even if we drew a land. Guess we can play Athalia though. I think this is better than wastelanding them. I think it's like we're just so far behind if we wasteland. Mm, but they could just go white plume. Oh, they went s anointed peacekeeper. Okay. I feel like if they had a white plume, they would have white plumed instead of Archon, but I'm not sure. Maybe that's not true. With with the with a wasteland in play, it makes sense for them to play white plume before Archon. This is looking a little doomed here. My opponent's cards are just better. <laughs> I mean, it's nice to have a three ball if we we're on the play or something, but uh, if you're in our opening hand or something, but Wasteland is turned kind of off. Uh, we did drop lanes. Holy. That is the biggest possible uh punish for my opponent my opponent could have chosen season dungeoneer here and they chose they didn't choose season dungeoneer which is absolutely great for me i can't think of a bigger punish than what just happened i'm still not sure we're winning but it was a huge punish so this thing is not a cleric rogue warrior or wizard it is a soldier not a warrior unfortunate not that i think i'm supposed to make that attack because it's what i have to hit a non-creature a non-land i should say but uh 
I definitely like my position a lot better now that I hit the planes off the top. <laughs> but I still think we could be in trouble. Oh, true, it's pro creatures. I always, you're right. You're right. No, they had second and third solitude. Oh my god, we're doomed. Uh, Vintage is the home of initiative now. It's not a huge part of the metagame, but it's uh, definitely present. That is the biggest blowout ever. Now they get the initiative, get a planes, and play their own season dungeoneer. I mean, it's. I don't know if I agree with the way you said that code, but I understand what you're saying. Ugh, everything is doomed. I guess I have to hold in case I draw my own solitude. My opponent's hands have been better than mine by a quite a large amount. Uh, uh, no, I think that's an inaccurate characterization, but I could be wrong. It depends on, like, which... Like, what are you looking at? Like, last weekend? That might be true. Last weekend. 3, 4, 23... Uh, uh, initiative Tinker was 16. Yeah, you're right. It was like 20. It was more than 20% last weekend. Okay, okay, okay. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Code is correct. It, it is currently a large portion of the vintage metagame. <laughs> uh, I don't think it's like a broken portion is what I'm, I guess I'm trying to say. It's definitely just fits at home in vintage, which is nice. All right, so if I draw Solitude and I Solitude the Birdman, can I win this game? It doesn't matter because I did not draw Solitude. Okay, rest in peace to the 5-0 dream. <laughs> All right, here we go. Round four of our Mono White League. We're up against the BPK. They will probably be very unhappy we ended up playing Mono White against them, but it is what it is. We'll see what kind of brew they're on. Currently, it looks like they are paused in declaring start of game actions, so that makes me think they're probably playing a cool Luris deck. Which is always a good time. Uh, they have a Luris, and we have the no ability to play a turn one creature. Uh, is this a mulligan? I don't think this is a mulligan. I think this is against Brian. I think if we just go Amiria's Call Pass, turn two Archon, turn three Dungeoneer. And maybe we can hit, like, a cavern off of Once Upon a Time. That doesn't, that doesn't feel like a, a bad play. Uh, we can't find a turn one creature with Once, right? There's no possibility of us playing a turn one creature, because we don't have any mana. That was what makes this hand really unfortunate. We just hold once until the next turn and, and see what happens. Uh, this is like a little slow, but Brian's decks are usually a little slow. And I think there's like enough value here that it's worth playing through. I mean, saying that, my opponent could just go like, mox, 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 kill me. But... Oh, they're, uh, they're on board to go a little slow with us. I should have known. Looking for a land off of this once upon a time. Uh, we, we, we missed on a land with our once upon a time. 
I guess we will take Lauren to kill Saga. Drat. Okay. All right, we resolved an Archon. That's nice. We do need to hit a land for our Dungeoneer. They didn't play a land for turn. Oh, no, here's their land for turn. They have eight cards in hand. I kind of suspect them to discard to hand size and then just draw with Lauren. Or, sorry, draw with Library. Yep, discarding to hand size. Discards a Misty Rainforest. I need a land drop, please. Ooh, hit the land drop. Um... We will attack and then hopefully resolve a seasoned dungeoneer. If we don't resolve our seasoned dungeoneer, we simply do it again. I wonder if we're supposed to play some way to cast these once upon a times. Probably not. Makes our deck too bad. It is unfortunate to draw a second once upon a time, but. All right, the Dungeoneer resolved. I kind of feel like we're getting balanced, but what's a guy to do, really? All right, here is balance, I assume. Yep. Um... I'm, like, weighing the thought of solituding to get two cards out of my hand to make them discard five no because if i fail to find planes i have to get rid of my ancient tomb or my Amiria, and then i won't be able to uh play my seasoned dungeoneer on the next one so i don't think failing to find planes is right i am considering pitching this lauren uh, but then I could just get saga I think I'm going to not do that. I definitely considered it, though. I think I'm going to keep one Ancient Tomb. Yeah, like, if I failed to find planes here, it'd be really bad for me. My opponent does need to discard three cards, which is nice. I wish I could get rid of this once upon a time somehow, but... I think you just have to, like, take the bad beats on the Once Upon a Times. I mean, you do have technically have an Emerald, a Lotus, and a Lotus Petal, so it's not uncastable, but... So they got rid of a Cathar Commando, a Savine's Reclamation, and a Mental Misstep, and I assume they play a land. They did not play a Saga. Uh, they probably have Ancestral, though, I assume. Yep. Brian never fails... Wow. Mm hmm. And they can actually cast Savines. It's pretty crazy. Nah, Brian never fails. Bottom the Chancellor. Do we top this Archon? Not like we're playing Archon this turn. We're definitely playing another Seasoned Dungeoneer to push forward to the Catacombs. Probably still supposed to top the Archon. I'm going to play a Seasoned Dungeoneer. I think it's much better than playing an Archon here. How is Initiative actually good in Vintage? Are you saying how is it good? Or I guess I have to interpret some part of your phrasing. How good is it? Or how is it good? It's good because uh, creature removal is pretty low in Vintage. So playing cards like Archon of Vimeria on turn one make it very hard for your opponent to interact with you. Uh, and for how good it is, it's a fairly playable deck. Oh, am I getting... Uh, <laughs> I'm a fool. I should have played Archon. I should have known my opponent would intuition for Bolt Key or Underworld Breach combo. Ah, my bad. Um, can I theoretically beat them in any way here? This gives them three mana. All right, I should have played Archon. That's on me. Yeah, so this brings back Underworld Breach with Savine's Reclamation. My bad. I should have seen that coming. Yeah, so this brings back uh, Underworld Breach and Lotus, and then they cast Intuition, 
getting brain freeze. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I should have just cast Archon. I guess that was greedy of me. Hmm. That is pretty brutal. We kind of got abused by the old Library of Alexandria balance ancestral recall. Savines is great. I love Savines. Um. So I can't beat this no matter what, right? If I put it into the graveyard, they have enough to go Black Lotus, probably. Can I explain why Initiative is so much better than the Monarch? Um, yeah, so it like puts an extremely fast clock. So one of the big things is that like an Archon of Ameria deck has a very slow clock. They have two brain freezes. Um, so the thing that the initiative does is it provides an extremely fast clock with forge into trap, sometimes killing as fast as turn two or three, or sorry, turn three maybe. Uh, and then if you don't get forge or trap, you actually get to play a super long game where you get to scry and make a free creature and get a free creature out of your deck. It's just like super, super strong. Okay. I, uh, I failed here in identifying that my opponent could cast intuition for their combo and win. Um... We're going to bring in Null Rod and Chalice, and that's fine. And we're going to take out uh, Solitudes. And we're going to bring in Mental Mist Up. I'm just going to take out Solitudes and not worry about it. They could technically play, like, one Lavinia or something weird, but I think I'll just, like, take the beats on that one. Man, I don't know why I felt like Brian wouldn't be able to kill me if I didn't play a new Archon, but my gut feeling was they shouldn't have been able to kill me if I played an Archon, but I guess I didn't really consider the, the intuition breach line, which is something I could have considered. I think what I wasn't really thinking about, well, if they have Vault Key, they probably still kill me, even if they don't have Breach in their deck, so... Uh, this one is turn one Thalia. I'm not sure this hand is good. We play turn one Thalia, and then... This hand's probably fine. Yo, know, what's up, Raphael? Volcanic. They won't have any red mana if we kill it. And Pearl. And Black Lotus. My god. <laughs> How about some mercy for a poor Justin who's... Can't do anything, man. Either way, we get to kill the Black Lotus here if they, like, crack it for force or if we just shoot it. A bunch of upside. All right, we're going to kill your Black Lotus. They might have a Swords of something. Yeah, it looks like they have a Swords. Okay, that's unfortunate. Next turn, we do have Wasteland 3-Ball, though. Uh, We have not activated Lauren. You don't typically activate Lauren very much. Because giving your opponent's card is usually not a great sign, but. Uh, some earlier builds of this deck played Lauren with Spirit of the Labyrinth, which let you activate it uh, at no detriment. Uh, but I, I don't typically play the Spirit of the Labyrinth in it. Spirit of the Labyrinth is unfortunately an enchantment creature, which makes it get hit by uh, the Force of Vigor in the best deck against it, or the best deck you would want it against, so. 
you can activate it. I'm just saying you don't normally activate it. And in the times where you're activating it, you're typically already winning. So Brian had the force for my... Looks like they're getting rid of this. Okay. Stoneforge Mystic. I guess I should have assumed there was a Stoneforge Mystic coming when my opponent had a Lion Sash in game one. Batter Skull. I don't know if we're beating Batter Skull, considering I boarded out all of my Solitudes. I guess I can back my Lauren back to my hand with my Caracas. Oh yeah, there's probably like one or two Stone Forges for sure. Alright, I really want to draw an initiative creature here. I instead drew a Chrome Mox. So the only good news is I technically can keep killing the Batter Skull with my Lauren. The bad news is like everything else. I guess maybe I'm supposed to play a Mary's Call Tap there. I'm not sure. Well, I still would need to... Oh, yeah, I guess I could have killed this, the Pearl, huh? I didn't really consider that. I guess I should have. Especially because they missed their land drop here. Oh, I have Black Lotus for a Mary's Call. Uh, I think it's still better for me to Lauren right now. I actually can cast this Amurius call, but now, no, but now they're going to have the Malevolent Hermit. Maybe I was supposed to cast them. Oh, no. One, two, three, four, five, six. I need them to tap a blue mana. <laughs> I've doomed myself. Oh, I tapped the blue mana. I think we're casting this. Boom. <laughs> I'm the Brian Kelly now. Uh, that's fun. I guess it was a good thing we didn't go for the pearl line. <laughs> that feels pretty nice, I must admit. I did enjoy that. I think we could keep the chalice in. Do we bring in some solitudes? Oh, I guess we're bringing in the gemstone caverns. I think we want some amount of solitudes back in the deck. Maybe we just take uh, some once upon a times out. All right, let's try that. <laughs> uh, boom. This feels like a keep. Nothing could go bad. We've drawn a lot of Black Lotuses tonight, so can't say I'm upset. Stoneforge. Uh-oh. I guess we can Solitude it. We have a lot of good choices here. We have a lot of good choices here. I want to wait on the Solitude until I see if I can find another white card to pitch. Hello. All right, so first I think we're going to bait the, the Force with Solitude because I think it's better to resolve the Dungeoneer. Mm. What do I actually care the most about? I could always... Wait, so they stopped playing Luris and they boarded in Batter Skull? 
Wow, I didn't even think about that. I'm trying to figure out if I care more about putting the Seasoned Dungeoneer in. I think I'm going to start with Solitude. I'm just happy I'm not getting... Uh... I wonder if I'm supposed to Wasteland here. I guess I can Wasteland if this Black Lotus doesn't get countered. Or it does get countered. I guess I could just go Archon Wasteland. No, that's got to be worse. I don't think so. I think they boarded in just Batter Skull, considering they were a Lurus deck before this. I think we should be able to beat one Construct, and we have Wasteland Null Rod, so... This should be fine. I guess this Construct makes our first attack a little awkward, but we have pro creatures after, so I don't think it matters much. I think I'm going to Wasteland them, not Null Rod them. I don't think I want that. Maybe I do want that. So they will take back the initiative for a turn, and then I guess it's bad if my opponent then has swords to plowshares after. That's how this goes badly. But it would still be bad if I didn't attack or anything, so. Uh, am I going to get combo killed? I guess you're right. I guess I should have played Null Rod. <laughs> Why? Why do we keep getting initiative murdered? No, I think it's better to make sure they don't get Black Lotus with their Urza Saga than to like try to play around. I we just getting murdered. Ah, uh, because like if I don't kill the Saga, ah, uh. oh man. All right, so I put Brain Freeze into their hand, and then they have to have Land Savine's Reclamation or something. Does this even win? Here's Savines for Breach, and then they cast Lotus. This doesn't win. They need to have more than this. I think they miscalculated. This doesn't look winning to me. Oh, no, they have Breach in their hand. Duh. They have Brain Freeze in their hand. Duh. It's perfectly winning. Oh, I'm so stupid. Okay, yeah, I guess I had to play Null Rod. The one of intuition gets me every time. Oh, they just put the Luris in the main deck post board. I love it. I, am I really supposed to play around one of intuition every single every single time? I don't know, man. It feels so bad. No, they had it in the sideboard, but then they wanted to play Batter Skull. Like the only time I lose here is if they have exactly the one intuition. Whereas I feel like there's a lot of bad things that can happen to me if I don't wasteland. But maybe the Null Rod just, like, gets rid of most of those bad things. So maybe it's fine. Man. So each time I didn't play the anti-combo piece, Brian Kelly immediately combo killed me with intuition. It just feels really rough because there's not like there's, like, three or four intuitions in their deck. There's only one intuition. But I got got.
All right, well, it was a good start in this little mono-white league. Has quickly crumbled uh, beneath the giant hands of Brian Kelly. Um, I don't know why it's giant hands, but whatever. It doesn't matter. This hand is just so medium. We're going to mulligan. Maybe I haven't been mulliganing enough. Maybe that's the problem. I need to mulligan more. Let's try this. Reveal Chancellor. Yo, what's up, Oliver? All right, we got a Scalding Tarn and a what? And a Mox, pay for it. Maybe I'm supposed to put the Chancellor on the bottom here and keep the Strip Mine. That might have been a mistake, huh? Hmm. Looks like we're gonna die. <laughs> uh, true Aloran. I was kind of hoping to draw a fast mana. We did draw another cavern and a Thalia. I feel like Thalia makes more sense to me here than getting another cavern and doing nothing. So... But we do need to draw lands now, which is, I guess, rough, but. I mean, we were still super dead to land Time Vault, but. Not much to say about that. I guess they could be playing Blue-White Initiative and just go like Ancient Tomb Initiative Creature and we're pretty far behind as well. The Lavinia is annoying. But we just need to hit a land for it to not be very good. Land, uh, I can also cast Lauren off of this cavern if I hit a land. I did not hit a land. Maybe he just was greedy, not taking the land. I think the big mistake was... For, I mean, maybe they would have played turn one Lavinia if I hadn't played Chancellor. Maybe three ball was the card I was supposed to put back, actually. I was thinking like once upon a time... Maybe I was, that doesn't make any sense. Maybe three ball was the card we were supposed to put back. Oh, it is mon it is blue white initiative. I just kept such a bad hand to beat this deck. Makes me feel really silly. They have swords. They can't play swords. Wow, they have a swords. There's only two swords in their deck, and they have a swords in their hand. That is extremely bad for me. I can't stress just how bad that is for me. We did finally draw the Ancient Tomb, but I guess the Ancient Tomb doesn't let us cast Archon. Uh, things are so bad. Hmm. Yeah, I think the mistake in this game was keeping three ball. I should have bought him three ball and kept strip mine. Even then, I'm not sure my play here is going to have... I, th I think they have a better set of cards than we do. Yeah, challenge is over. We we went 3-3 three, three with Doomsday. Um, So we're just playing some mono weight right now. Could have cast Archon. How are we casting Archon? I have a cavern on human. Hmm. They got a ponder, no attack. Uh, we need like a a season dungeon here. If we draw a season dungeon here, wasteland is not great. Uh, 
Uh, can't activate this Lauren into this Narse. I guess I can because it's every turn. I may be supposed to be activating Lauren soon. Kind of have really big. I guess I can't Solitude anymore because of Lavinia. So there are a lot of problems right now. <laughs> there are a lot of problems. <laughs> sure. It's like pretty bad to activate Lauren because they're kind of stuck on man mana right now. What's good for me? Season Dungeoneer is like my only great draw. I guess Plains or Cavern are pretty decent for Archon, but it might be too late. I could have cast Sphere. What is that doing for me? How is that helping me besides dealing two damage to me? I think casting Sphere right here would be a very poor decision. I'm going to activate this Lauren. I don't think I have a lot of time left. What does this say? Sorry, opponent. It's not good. And Ancient Tomb. Okay, I'm off it. Uh, these are not the what we need. Let's try this again on the play. And we're going to bring in Null Rod and Chalice and Mental Misstep. How do we do this? All of our cards are good. <laughs> on the play, all of our cards are good. I guess Chancellor is not... Well, they do have forces. Maybe Chancellors are just not that good on the are at all in this matchup, and we just bring in a bunch of swords. That could be true. Just give me all the cards that actually do something. This hand has no initiative creatures again. Man. Like, it has fast mana, and it has a play, but it doesn't have an initiative creature, and that's really what we're looking for. Or, like, a turn one Archon. Is this really going to be a keep that's going to get us there? It is better than in the mirror. Like, if it was the mirror, I don't think we would be as happy because the Thalia would be worse. But the Thalia against my opponent's deck here is better. It's probably a keep. I wonder if this is a Chrome Mox angle. Probably. This is just like not, I guess it's not that bad against an opposing initiative creature because we can swords it and take the initiative. And it's pretty decent against a Saga draw because we have a Lauren. So maybe there's some merit in this hand. My opponent just kept a no land all mox in hand and didn't play anything. Okay. I think I'm just going to get a clock going here. Uh, and then we can play null rod after we played our creatures. So a pretty bold keep for my opponent. Like you can't really keep that in the mirror. Like what if I play turn one archon? It's the same problem. I'm not going to play this Null Rod till I have to. I would rather continue playing creatures. Ugh. I would love that one. I guess I could theoretically activate my Lauren to try to find a creature. That just, or find a land. It just doesn't seem like it makes a lot of sense when my opponent needs to find a card to get out of this. All right, they found it. So now they can probably play a bunch of Moxen. And maybe they'll have counter magic up for my Null Rod. So this could be pretty bad for me. I could, of course, resolve a Null Rod last turn. And then this wouldn't have been able to be happening. I don't know if that's really good. Like, we still have Land Dungeoneer that I want to cast. Black Lotus, uh-huh. And then what? Okay, this is great for me. 
So they're going to get another basic, but what I'm going to do is just swords it, take the initiative, and throw an, an uncounterable null rod into play. And I think that should just be winning. Like, what can they possibly do from this point? Mm, yeah, I think it makes sense. And if we hit any lands, we still have additional creatures and stuff. And we're already forging into the Undercity. Not putting it on Thalia, because that's the one they want to Swords the most. Looks like they're going to Swords anyways. Swords on the white on the Lauren. That's fine. Just looking for any land drop. Hits the Caracas. Plays an uncounterable white plume. Hits them for five. With trap. And attack. Playing their own initiative creature there was n wild. Don't think you're allowed to do that. Alright, they hit another land drop. Balance here could be good. Nope, they're going to steal the initiative back. And they're going to get a 5-5. Five five. Uh, I win the game with a land. Maybe not win the game, win the game, but that was not a land. So if I steal the initiative, I draw an extra card. Yeah, it's probably supposed to be an attack here. Draws me a card, and then if I get a land, I throne. Nice. Uncounterable season dungeoneer. Best hit probably is just solitude. Maybe not. Maybe Archon. No, it's probably just solitude. I guess that this exposes me to balance. I think that's the only thing to be worried about from this spot. I don't know if that is better or... I mean, if I play Archon, though, how big is my Archon? It's a 5-8. I guess Archon would have blocked. So maybe Archon is just better. Okay, so now we're on the draw. We're going to bring the gemstone caverns back in. We're going to take the chalice out. And um, I still think we're the null rod side of this matchup. Because my opponent has all of that other tinker stuff happening. So let's try this. Ooh, I'm falling asleep. Hopefully I can maybe sleep after this and then I can do the 3 a.m. That'd be pretty nice. This hand has no fast mana. This hand has no, not enough fast mana. Mm-mm-mm-mm. The sand has no fast mana. All right. <laughs> I don't know. I think we're dead. We did the mulliganing and did not find a, a keepable hand in our first three. Not much to do about that. Flames. Hmm. 
Okay. You got it. I would be extremely surprised if I can put together anything here that resembles a win. I guess my best thing that could happen is my opponent plays an initiative creature, and then I draw a white card, solitude the initiative creature, and steal the initiative. I feel like that's the only good thing that could have happened. Or I could draw my own, I guess. That's not bad. Do need to hit a land for that. So spin, they get six looks to find something that they're interested in. We are super far behind, but it's definitely not out of the... Oh, they found something they were interested in. So what does that mean? Does that mean they have an initiative creature? Oh, they have a Saga. Saga's quite good here. So they have an initiative creature. Um... I can uncounterably kill this because they are tapped out. Take the initiative back. I think that's better than any of these other options. And by the other options, I mean lose, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. There aren't actually other options. All right. So hit this. And then drawing another Thal. I forgot that maybe we don't want all of our Thalia's post board. They're still not bad, but... So this first one gives us a Plains. And then... The second one will give us a 4-3, which can attack through the Saga. But the Saga will steal back unless we draw... I mean, we could play... Mm, probably just steals back and things are bad. Why not wait for my draw step for a solitude? You're right. We should wait for our draw step for a solitude. And then I could have pitched the Thalia and kept the white. Oh, yeah. We would have been really, really far ahead. That's a good point. We would have been really, really in a good spot if I had been able to pitch the Thalia. I was just thinking about uncounterable, but there was no way they can get a counterable if they just wait. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. If I had just waited till my main phase to do the solitude, it would have been really good for us. So now they have one, two, three, four. We have a first strike, so we are still attacking through. Uh, I definitely would, I would have actually, we would be in trap already if I had done it that way, because we would have cast an uncounterable, another one creature, and then this thing would have been untapping. Wow, we would be extremely far ahead if I had done that. Wow, that's good to know though. Uh, yeah, that's crazy. I really threw this game, huh? And then they're going to make two big creatures that are too big for me to beat. I guess we would still have a similar problem if I had done it the right way. Uh, but we would have been in a much better spot. We have a lot of answers to Saga in our deck between Lauren and Wastelands, but we just didn't. We don't have, we don't have any of them. We didn't draw them, any of them, so. Um, this just looks doomed now. I think it would still be doomed if we had a, a cleric in play because we would still trap them to five. So this isn't doom doomed because my opponent did play a mana crypt. So if we can draw an initiative creature and trap them, we have a chance. We don't have much of a chance, but we do have a chance. They could always swords their own creature, though. Or they can just kill me beforehand. Trap me down to nine. Okay, I think I need to draw uh, a Seasoned Dungeoneer or a Resolving White Plume on this turn. And I think we're still live if I do. Archon. Uh, this still lets me chump and gives me a chance. Because they can lose two flips and I can draw an uncounterable creature. Yeah, we would be in a much better spot if I had kept the 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 white initiative creature because then we would have them at five and they we wouldn't even have to try to find one 
they could just lose the mana crypt flips. Maybe they wouldn't have played the mana crypt in that case, but I think they had to play the mana crypt just to make the construct tokens large enough. Let's see if they lose their flip. They did lose their flip. They don't have... So they have... Oh, they have Teferi. Okay, Teferi gets us. Uh, yeah, this was a bad, though. I definitely played this badly. It was a tough. We mulliganed to, what, four cards? But we almost won anyways. It's pretty nice. Where's my game? Can I draw a card? Okay. All right. I feel like I learned a lot from that league, at least. That was fun. Two, three. Um, I wonder if we want to try... What are those cards called? Archons? Ooh, them being Archon is pretty nice for Cavern as well. My Magic Online is like, you don't want Archons. Uh, Archon of that one. Archon of Absolution. All right, let's put uh, one Archon of Absolution... Two Archons of Absolution for one Tabernacle and one... Maybe Mental Mist Up is the card. Maybe Swords, seeing as Swords is the mirror anyways. Let's try that. That's an interesting idea. All right, cool. Uh, thanks for hanging out today. If you want to see more vintage content, my YouTube channel every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday has new vintage videos. I'll see you then. Thank <laughs> you.